welcome back to my channel today I'll be teaching you how to make this very beautiful toddler dress um, this is for a size for a one year old so I'll be demonstrating from size three months until four years and um, this uh, pattern is very textured as well as a block pattern that means um, it's not a see-through it may have some holes because of course it's crochet but my choice of stitch uh, was one that's not showing through the inner part of the dress so you can see when it comes to the texture as well as the body of the dress so I chose two colors to use and you can choose any colors of your choice for me I went with pink and then red and then I found the neutral color of pink and red which is white because when red is mixed with white we get pink so um, that's why I went with this white uh, belt in the waistband so this is totally adjustable you can open it up and then adjust the size of the waist area if you feel like um, the dress is very tight and then that's for the front side of the dress and when we go to the back side this is what we have I'm supposed to weave in this tail don't worry about it and uh, when we go to this side I made an opening at the back so that we don't struggle with putting the head of the baby through the dress and I I made uh, these two straps so that they can tie at the back to form a little ribbon at the back of the dress and also to make it adjustable so that we don't struggle when dressing up the baby so um, as I said this is for a one year old and let's get into the materials and see what we need for this beautiful tutorial for the materials I used uh, yarn and for the yarn I used this is a Chinese yarn. I don't know how to read Chinese, so maybe someone could help me out. This is the yarn that I used for the pink part of the dress, as you can see here. And I used only one ball. One ball was enough for me to do the upper part. But if you're making for different sizes, then you'll need two balls of this to do the upper part because I believe it will be wider and um, longer. So uh, I used exactly one ball for the size uh, of one year. And this is the brand. If you can help me out or try to translate this for some of our followers, please help me out. And then for the lower part, I used Nako. So if you don't have this yarn brand, you can go ahead and just use Nako satin and you can choose your colors from Nako. And you use only one brand for your piece. So for Nako, I used um, the red part, the deep red. This is Nako satin. And as we go along, you'll see this color surface during the tutorial because this was my first choice. This is Alize Cotton Gold, but I had a problem with this shade matching with pink. And I felt like this was a richer shade. So into the video, you'll see me switching from this to this. That's... Uh, that was a personal preference and um, if you don't want to change that then it's really up to you you'll also need a pair of scissors mine are here you will need a measuring tape this is a must because you're going to take a few measurements as we work and then you'll also need a dunning needle and for the hook I used a three millimeter crochet hook I don't know where it is right now okay here it is I have a three millimeter crochet hook so let's dive into the video and learn how to make this beautiful dress. So you're going to grab your yarn and then your same hook, which is the three millimeter crochet hook. And we are going to make a chain that is a multiple of six plus two. So um, we're going to start off with a slip knot 
and then we're going to make our chain one two three four five six one two three four forty eight and plus two I am making for a one year old but for all the other sizes you're going to follow the same exact instructions and uh, you're going to make sure that you follow the measurements in order to get something that fits um, the person that you're making for very well. So for me, this is nine inches. For all the other sizes, I'll be putting the measurements on the screen. So this is um, a chain of 50, which is a multiple of six plus two. So you're going to go into the second chain from the hook with one single crochet. So this doesn't count as a chain. And this is the first chain. And then into the second chain, you're going to place one single crochet into the second chain and then you're going to prepare for a double crochet skip two stitches or two chains and then into the third you're going to place one double crochet chain one one double crochet into the same exact chain chain one and one more double crochet into the same chain Here we are and this creates our very first shell so after this you're going to skip two chains and into the third you're going to place one single crochet let's do that again prepare for a double crochet skip two chains and into the third you're going to place one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet into the same exact chain to create our second shell. And then after the shell, you're going to go into the third chain from, from that point. So skip two chains and into the third, you're going to place one single crochet. So that's the repeat for this row. Skip two chains, place a shell into the next chain. A shell is one double crochet chain one, one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet to make a total of three double crochets and then skip two chains and one single crochet into the next chain so repeat that all the way across All right, so we are coming to the end of our row and you should be having a total of three chains left. And um, after your last shell here, we're going to skip over the two chains and go into the very last chain with one single crochet. So I forgot to mention something while I was beginning my panel. You should make sure that the multiple of six is divisible by two. For example, um, 48 divided by 6 is 8 and the 8 is divisible by 2 make sure you work with um, even multiples because uh, this is going to help us split the back panel very comfortably well so you can do 6 times 8 which is 48 plus 2 50 chains 6 times 10 which is 60 divide uh, the, the 10 is divided by 2 to get 5 it should be something that's um, exactly divisible by 2 the multiple of 6 should be exactly divisible by 2 
for example 8 10 12 14 16 18 and so on so so far we have a total of one two three four five six seven and eight as you can see we have a total of eight shells for our very first row so let's go on to row two for row two you're going to make a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work and then go into the very first single crochet with one double crochet and then you are going to skip over the next double crochet you skip over the chain one space and go into the next double crochet with one single crochet that double crochet where we we have placed the single crochet is the middle double crochet of this shell so after this you're going to prepare for double crochet and skip over the next chain one space skip over the double crochet and then go into the single crochet and you're going to place one shell and I told you a shell is one double crochet chain one one double crochet into the same stitch chain one and one double crochet into the same stitch there you have it we finished this shell and then we are going to go into the middle double crochet of the next shell so you can see we have one two three double crochets so the middle double crochet is the one that gets the single crochet and then after this we go into the next single crochet we skip over all this we don't work anything in there we just go into the single crochet and place a shell in there so one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one one double crochet so we are done with our next shell and go into the middle double crochet of the next shell with one single crochet then one shell into the next single crochet so this pattern works up really fast and it's kind of obvious once you know where to place the stitches so after this shell you're going to go into the middle double crochet of the next shell with one single crochet and then one shell into the next single crochet one single crochet into the middle double crochet of the next shell and then one shell into the next single crochet that's the repeat for this row i don't think uh this pattern is confusing at all it's very straightforward So the stitches are placed in the middle stitch of the shell as well as the single crochet in the middle of the shells so that's all you have to remember so I'm placing my last shell here and this shell has been placed in the single crochet stitch here and then you're going to go into the middle double crochet of the last shell and place one single crochet and for row two we end it by preparing for a double crochet and going into the last single crochet of the row below and you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet and that mirrors exactly what we have at the very beginning of our row remember we started with a chain four which counted as a which counted as a double crochet chain one and then one more double crochet into the same exact stitch and that's why we end our row like this so let's go on to row three for row three you're going to chain one turn your work one single crochet into the same exact stitch And then you're going to prepare for a double crochet and we are going to start placing our shells into the single crochet stitches and our single crochets into the middle double crochet of the sh next shell so into the single crochet you're going to place one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet which creates our very first shell and then go into the middle stitch of the next shell 
with one single crochet and we're going to repeat that all the way across one shell in each single crochet stitch and then one single crochet in the middle uh, stitch of the next shell go all the way across and I'll meet you back at the end of my row So we're coming to the end of our row and I am placing my very last shell into the last single crochet of the row below. And after this, you are going to go into the second chain. So you're going to skip over this double crochet, skip over the next chain one, and then you go into the next chain with one single crochet and that marks the end of row three this is what you should have now we're going on to our next row which is row four and row four is going to basically be the same as row two so you're going to make a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work and you are going to go into the same exact single crochet with one double crochet and then go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet and from here onwards we are going to just go into the next single crochet with one shell and then into the next middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet so keep repeating this all the way across until the end of your row. So we're coming to the end of row four and we are going into the very last single crochet with one double crochet, chain one and one more double crochet into the last single crochet. And of course you guessed it right, row five is going to basically be the same as row three. So chain one, turn your work and into the same exact stitch you are going to go in with a single crochet into the very first stitch and then from here you're going to start with your shells into the next single crochet like that and then you are going to go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet so repeat that all the way across and from now onwards we are going to just alternate between rows two and three until we have our desired length i'll be letting you know how many rows that i did for my front panel and then we shall see what to do next all right guys so i went ahead to do a total of 18 rows all together and uh, this is what i came up with and this measures a total of uh, 
six inches all the way down remember the body was nine inches as you can see here when I give it a slight tug or a little stretch because I want it to be well fitted onto the body of my client so nine inches is just fine So um, now I'm going on to row 19 and um, I'm going to chain one. Row 19 is basically going to be the same as row three. So chain one, turn your work and then single crochet into the very first double crochet. And then go into the next single crochet after skipping the chain one and the double crochet here. And you're going to place one double crochet, chain one one double crochet into the same stitch chain one and then one double crochet into the same exact stitch so that will create our very first shell and then you're going to skip the next chain one space and then go into the next double crochet which is in the middle of the next shell with a single crochet and then create another shell into the next single crochet just like we've been doing for the previous rows so nothing changes here but the only difference is for this part i am going to do a total of only two shells so this is the first one and then this is the second one and then i'll go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet just like that and after this i will cut my yarn i'm not going to finish up the row after you chain one, you're going to leave a long strand that you can use to attach and then cut your yarn and you are going to pull through, leaving the tail behind. And now um, we are going to get our yarn again and then we are going to reattach. So you're going to make a slip knot and you're going to count two shells in. So remember, this is the edge, and then one and two. So into the second, uh, after the second shell, remember the single crochet is worked in the middle of the second shell. So that's where we're going to attach our yarn. I don't know if you see what I'm doing. Just follow along closely. And then we are going to attach our yarn into the middle stitch of the second shell on this side. And we're going to just mirror exactly what we did on this side so you're going to chain one and single crochet into that same exact stitch and while I'm working this side I'm making sure that I weave in this tail so after a single crochet you're going to prepare for a double crochet and go into the next single crochet where we would have placed the next shell so we're going to place one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one double crochet into the same exact space or the same exact stitch which is the single crochet here and then we're going to go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet and then we're going to go into the next single crochet with one shell so one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and then one more double crochet into the same exact single crochet and while i was working these stitches i was weaving in the tail as you can see here and then after this we are going to go into the second chain of the chain four and we are going to place a single crochet So that marks the end of row 19 on both sides. So as you can see, we have a neckline opening at this point. You're going to make sure that when you measure this, this opening here, you can get at least half of the head circumference because 
we want our piece to be well fitted we don't want to finish our piece and then it can't fit at the end so um, after this you're going to chain one and leave a strand to attach just cut your yarn and then pull through so the approach that I'm using for this piece is that I'm going to create you don't even have to worry about the fitting of the head through this space because um, I am going to create two back panels but also creating an opening at the back so that in case this doesn't fit we still have some more room at the opening of the back that can allow the head of the baby to go through so this marks the end of the very first um, part of our dress which is the front panel and now we're going to start working on the back panel you can go ahead and cut this tail that we were weaving in while working uh, row 19 and this is the front panel so let's go on to our next part which is the back panel um, you're going to make the same exact starting chain as we did for the front panel so we are going to make a chain of uh, 50 which is a multiple of 6 plus 2 which... all right guys so i did a total of 10 rows for my back panel before we start the split so you're going to determine how deep you want the opening at the back to be uh, this is going to increase the space that um, helps us to increase the head circumference. So for me, I did a total of 10 rows so that I get to the mid back and then we can split this area here. So row 11, um, this is the reason why I told you to have an even number of uh, multiples, um, uh, an even multiple for example 8 10 12 14 16 and so forth so we have a total of eight shells that means when we are working you should make sure you stop on a row that starts with half the shell the one that starts with uh, a chain of four and ends with a double crochet um, we are now going to split the shells into two so you can see the beginning had a total of one two three four five six seven and eight shells that means for the next row which is row 11 i should work until i have a total of half of the eight which is four shells so you're going to make your chain of one and turn your work and this row is going to be like row three the odd rows look the same so single crochet into the very first stitch and then go into the next single crochet and place a shell just like we've been doing nothing changes at this point the only difference is the rows are going to become shorter so single crochet in the middle stitch of the next shell then shell into the next single crochet then single crochet in the middle stitch of the next shell so so far we have a total of one and two shells and then we're going to just continue until we have a total of four shells for our one side of the dress of the back panel so this is the fourth shell so you're going to work until you have a total of half of the shells that you started with on row one so we have one two three and four and then here in the next shell you're going to place a single crochet into the middle stitch of that next shell and this is what we have and you can see we are left with one two three three shells and then the next shell will be placed here don't worry about that um, after this single crochet here you are going to make a chain of four so we are going to just go back to the pattern chain of four and then single crochet into the single crochet at the beginning and this just reminds you of row row two which starts with a chain of four and ends with a double crochet so we're just going to go ahead and work our pattern just like we were working before but 
but we are going to first work one side and then we work on the next side so shell and then single crochet shell and then single crochet So when you come to the end of row, this should be row 12. You're going to double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So row 13 is going to be the same as row three. So chain one, turn your work, single crochet into the very first stitch and then go into the next single crochet with one double crochet. And then continue to place a shell into that single crochet and we are going to keep working these two rows just like we were doing before until we have the same number of rows that we did for the front panel before we did the neckline extension so my front panel had a total of 18 rows so I'm going to keep working until I have a total of 18 rows and then I'll be back to show you what to do just do the same exact number of rows that you did for the front panel before placing those small extensions that created the neckline opening so here do the same number of rows here and as you can see this is where we are at the moment and we are still working until we get to this row so continue working and I'll meet you back at that point when we hit that row before these extensions. All right guys, so um, this is how your work should look like when you get to your row 18 or the even number that you ended on, on your front panel before you created the extension of the neckline opening. So um, I have my 18 rows here. And after this, I am going to do the same exact thing that I did on this side. On the front panel creating that extension by two shells so you're going to make um, chain one turn your work and this is going to resemble row row three I guess yes row three is the one that starts with a single crochet into the very first stitch and then make a shell into the next single crochet everything else remains the same after the shell single crochet into the next shell in the middle and then place a shell into the next single crochet the only difference is the row becomes shorter and after this you're going to go into the middle stitch of the next uh, shell and then place a single crochet there and the moment you're done with this you're going to chain one and then leave a tail for attaching and cut your yarn and at this point we are done with um, one of the sides of the back panel this is what you'll have and then we are going to attach our yarn make a slip knot and we are going to attach our yarn into that same exact stitch where we placed the single crochet the last single crochet of row 11 here and we are going to attach our yarn into that same exact stitch because it's the exact middle of the back panel and after attaching your yarn you're going to chain one and single crochet into the same exact stitch so single crochet there like that and then we are going to go all the way across um, going ahead to create the same exact pattern uh, prepare for a double crochet but then we are going to be weaving in this tail as we go so go into the single crochet with one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one double crochet which creates our very first shell and then 
single crochet in the middle of the next shell from now on everything remains the same the only difference is we are working back and forth until we get to the exact middle of the back panel so these rows are going to run all the way across like this and then come back to this point to the middle section of the back panel so let me just show you a few rows So after the shell, you're going to go in the middle stitch of the next shell with a single crochet while weaving in this tail as you go. So place a shell into the next single crochet. One, two, and three. After this, you're going to go into the next middle stitch of the next shell and place a single crochet there so place a shell into the next single crochet and after that you're going to place one single crochet after skipping the double crochet and the next chain and you're going to place a single crochet here and at this point you can cut this tail and after that you are going to make a chain of four and this is going to be the same exact as row two so make a chain of four and turn if you still have any tails peeping you're just going to snip them off so that we have a very neat piece so after your chain of four, you're going to place one double crochet into the same exact stitch and then continue with the pattern. One single crochet, one shell, one single crochet, a shell, single crochet, shell, single crochet, sorry I didn't chain one after this, single crochet here and then into the very last single crochet you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet so at this point you can see the clear division between uh, the left panel and the right panel of the back panel so just go ahead and do the same exact number of rows until row 18 or whatever number of rows that you had for your front panel before creating the neckline shaping and then I'll meet you back at that point because uh, we may end up on this side which is a little bit confusing so I'll be back when I'm at row 18 and I show you what to do from there so as you can see I'm on row 18 and it ends on this side as opposed to this side where we are supposed to create this extension for the neckline opening so what we are going to do sorry what we are going to do right now is to chain one and then you are going to leave a very long strand because this chain is going to help us create um, create the what is it the straps that we are going to tie here at the back so just leave a very long strand and then you pull through make sure you don't get your yarn twisted just pull through I didn't know how much yarn that I needed to leave behind but um, I'm making sure that I have enough I would rather have excess than not enough so after this you are now going to turn your work you're going to make a slip knot and you're going to turn your work onto this side as if you you've turned your work to work on the next round the next row so um you're going to go as you can see here we have the v stitch which is here and then the first shell 
and in the middle of the second shell so the vestige the first shell in the middle of the second shell that's where we're going to place our yarn and attach it like that and then we're going to chain one and single crochet into that same exact stitch and then place a shell into the next single crochet while weaving in the tail at the back of course we have a tail there and then we go into the middle of the next shell with a single crochet and then we go into the next single crochet with a shell one two and three and after that we are going to go after skipping double crochet and then the chain and then into the next chain we're going to place one single crochet there and that means we have balanced you can cut this tail right now uh, we have balanced what was happening on this side onto this side after row 18 and we have also balanced what happened on the front panel onto the back panel as you can see here you should have something that looks exactly like this now what we are going to do is we have tails that we left behind here and now it's time to attach a few pieces together before we go ahead to uh, to work the bottom part of the dress so just make sure all the chains are very tightly closed up and at this point don't cut your yarn just leave it attached just pull up that loop and leave it like that so now we're going to get a darning needle and you're going to make sure your work is on the wrong side um, I think this is my wrong side just identify where you want your wrong side to be and we're going to get this tail these tails and join the pieces together so we have this this is a single crochet so single crochet to single crochet we're joining stitch to stitch so that we align our work very well so that very first stitch gets two joinings there and from here you're going to make one joining to the double crochet stitch and then we skip the chains in between just going to the next stitch and then the last stitch of the next shell don't join the chain one spaces there'll be too many stitches in between then join the single crochet to single crochet and then double crochet to double crochet skip the chain one and join the next double crochet to double crochet skip the chain one and then double crochet to double crochet and the moment you're done with that go into the last single crochet and join to single crochet and after this you are going to just go back and forth weaving in this tail just weave in and when you feel like the yarn is secure enough you are going to just cut it off this is how the joining looks like now you're going to get this tail that remained behind the one that we didn't use to join and thread it and what I want to do is to join the single crochet to single crochet just to have a very nice joining here so that we don't leave any spaces behind the moment you're done with that you're going to just weave in this tail and make sure you weave in the tails on the wrong side of your work okay 
just go back and forth until your tail is secure enough on the wrong side I can't emphasize this enough because we don't want to tamper with the right side of our work after this you're going to cut your yarn and get this out of the way and this is how the joining looks like on one side we're just going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on this side here so for this side we have only one strand that we have to work with because this is still attached to our yarn ball so you're going to just get this thread it and then start joining the same exact way as we did for the other side the opposite side So I'm joining into the single crochet stitch here. And the moment I'm done with that, I'm going to weave in my tail. Alright, so as you can see here, we have gotten rid of the loose ends. The only tail that we have is this very long one that's going to create the straps at the back. So when you fold over your work, this is what we have. You can see we have the neckline opening happening here, but then uh, you don't have to worry about this opening not passing through the head because we also have this opening here so it will open up completely so that the head of the baby can go through so um, the next thing that we are going to do is to get some yarn and we start joining the sides of the dress so I think we should make the straps first so that we get this strand out of the way just turn your work to the wrong side, to the back side, sorry. The right side of the back side. So it's on the right side, but this is the back of the dress. And we are going to just insert our hook into the very last stitch and pull up a loop. Then we are going to make a chain of 50. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I think a chain of fifty may be too long. I think we should do a total of thirty. So after that, you're going to just go back on that chain with a slip stitch. We don't want anything dramatic. So just go into each and every chain with one slip stitch. Alternatively, if you don't want this string here, you can go ahead and use a button. If you want a button on the dress. So instead of the string, you can use a button. But I'm going for this because I don't have the appropriate button for my dress.
all right so I have my slip stitches all the way back to the body of the dress and now I'm going to work around this opening until I get to this corner so into each and every double crochet space you're going to place one sorry two slip stitches like that and then into each single crochet you're going to place one slip stitch so two slip stitches into the double crochet space make sure they're not very tight and then one slip stitch into the single crochet space and we are going to repeat that make sure you're not tampering with the general shape of the dress that's why you shouldn't have very tight stitches and then one slip stitch into the single crochet space so this is what you should have and after this you're going to cross over to the opposite side just turn your work like this and then into the single crochet space just make a slip stitch slip stitch into the double crochet space two times and then once into the single crochet space and you're going to repeat this until you get to the upper corner all right so we are here into the last double crochet space you're going to place two slip two slip stitches into that space and we are going to make a chain of 30 So I have made 30 chains and we are going to go back on those 30 chains with one slip stitch into each and every chain just like we did on the opposite side. All right, so now we are back to the body of the dress and we shall make one slip stitch into that very space like that and then chain one and then pull through this tail and the moment you're done with that this is what your straps will look like the straps at the back of the dress and when the baby finishes wearing the dress you can just go ahead and tie a small ribbon at the back like this I think this is really cute you can make them as long as you want you can make a chain of 50 but I went with a chain of 30 so that when I tie my knot it doesn't get in the way this is what it looks like in the end so just do what's favorable for you. The little ribbon looks so cute. All right, so after this, you're going to get your darning needle. I think I'm going to first reduce this. As I told you, it's better to have excess yarn than running out of yarn when you need to use it. After this, you're going to just go on the inside of the dress and start weaving in this tail. Just go back and forth. And after that, you're going to cut your yarn. 
put the turning needle away now uh, we are going to also join the sides of the dress so that we create the armholes as you can see here just turn your work to the wrong side like this you can use a darning needle you can use your yarn whatever you prefer to use I'm going to use yarn here and um, I will just go into the very first single crochet space yeah the single crochet space and we're going to join with single crochets so attach your yarn and single crochet into that space and then two single crochets into the double crochet space then one single crochet into the single crochet space two single crochets into the double crochet space like that so continue to join until you get enough room for the armhole I think I'm going to join I'll be letting you know let me just continue doing this all right so two four six eight I don't want the armholes to be very tight so I joined a total of nine rows and left the remaining. You can join a total of 10, but I prefer to have enough room for the armhole opening. So after this, you're going to chain one, pull through, and then get your darning needle and weave in this tail. I think it's better to weave in your ends as you go because uh, when you're done with a project, and you haven't yet done that it's really frustrating you become lazy all right the moment you're done with that you're going to cut this tail here and get rid of it and then now we have two tails here you can just go ahead and tie them up and make a knot if you prefer to weave them in, then you can actually weave them in. Have no problem with that. Just weave in. Alright, so after weaving in the ends, you're going to just go onto the opposite side, which is this side, and do the same exact thing that we've done here. Join the same number of rows uh, to create the armhole on this side as well. So, okay, so after joining everything, you're going to turn your work onto the right side. Look how cute the yoke is i think this is the yoke or the upper part of the dress is and the stitch is so beautiful and uh, now we're going back onto this chain that we left behind and we're going to work around the armholes um, making sure that we are working on the right side so we're going to chain one and turn our work And into the that joining part, this should be the single crochet space. You're going to place one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. We are basically placing a shell, but this time instead of having three double crochets, we want a total of five double crochets so that we can create a ruffle look. 
So those are three, four, and five. And after that, you're going to go into the double crochet space with one single crochet. And then go into the single crochet space there, in between the double crochet spaces. Into that space, you're going to place a shell, but with a total of five double crochets separated by chain one spaces. So those are three, four, and five. And after this, you're going to go into the double crochet space with one single crochet. Go into the next single crochet space with a shell. So one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. That's a total of one, two, three, four, chain one, and one more double crochet into the same space and then single crochet into the double crochet space. So we are creating those little shells as well as ruffles. They could create ruffles, but it's not guaranteed, but they will create shells definitely. So after this, you're going to just go around the armhole, creating that little design around the edge, just to give it some more definition and a little touch of cuteness after this single crochet So when you come to the armpit area, this is what we have so far. And you can see the shells here on the edge. When you come to the armpit area, you are going to just go into that space that has the joining and create a shell into it. So after your shell of five double crochets, you're going to go into the double crochet space on the other side and place a single crochet there. And then we're going to just continue to work our pattern as usual until we come to the end of our row. So this is the very last shell and I'm going to place one single crochet into the very last uh, double crochet space and then go at the bottom of the next shell and place a slip stitch and after this I'm going to chain one and cut my yarn pull through and this is how the sleeve looks like if you feel like you want more rows, just go ahead and add more 
rounds of the shells so that you get a longer sleeve so i'm going to go ahead and weave in this tail as well just turn your work to the wrong side So you're going to just go ahead and do the same exact thing on the opposite side for the second sleeve. So just grab your yarn and attach it into, this time I'll start from here, from the base of the sleeve. So attach your yarn into this joining, right below the armpit. Touch your yarn. And then you're going to straight away start creating shells into that same exact space. I think I'll create it here because that spot is very tight. two three four and five and then single crochet into the next double crochet space like that and then repeat the same exact process until you get done with the second sleeve all right so this is what you should have for the upper part of the dress and now we are going to switch colors to our red color and for the red I am using Alize cotton gold and I'm getting the inner yarn all right so you're going to grab your next color I don't know what color that will be for you but uh, we're going to turn our work onto the downer part and we're going to turn it onto the back part of the dress where we have the ribbon and we're going to locate one of the shells that is around the middle section so just pick one of them and go into that chain where the shell came from in there and now uh, we're going to chain one and place all right so you're going to place a single crochet into that space where the first shell was and then into the single crochet here you can see there are peaks and valleys peaks and valleys so where the previous shell was you're going to place a single crochet but where the next single crochet was you're going to go into that space with a shell and this time we are going to place a total of seven double crochets separated with chain one spaces so uh, one double crochet chain one this is the second double crochet chain one double crochet chain one double crochet chain one double crochet so this is a total of one two three four and five we want a total of seven so after your single crochet there you're going to go into the space that had the next single crochet there and you're going to place one shell which is one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one double crochet there like that and into the same space you're going to place one single crochet and then another shell into that same exact space so 
prepare for a double crochet and go into the same space with one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet into the same exact space and you can see we've created two shells here and you're going to go into the space that had the shell on the opposite side and place one single crochet in there just like that so we're going to repeat that go into the next space that had a single crochet here and you're going to place two shells so one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet and then single crochet into the same exact space and then place another shell into the same space so one double crochet chain one one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet into the same space and then go into the next space that had the shell here and place a single crochet so that's going to be the repeat for this row or round because now we're going to start working in rounds after the single crochet you're going to place two shells into the next uh, single crochet space All right, after that, single crochet into the next space. So this is going to help us flare out our, our dress as you will see later on. But for now, this is exactly what we are doing all the way around. Sorry. So when you come to this part of the joining, we are still going to place a total of two shells in there. Like that. This is the first shell and then single crochet into the same space and then place your second shell. And after that, you're going to go into the next space and place a single crochet there. So go all the way around until you come back to the beginning of your round. And I'll show you how to wind up your first round of red. All right, guys, so we are almost coming to the end of the round. And I'm placing one single crochet here. I'm placing my next two shells into the next space so this is the first shell and then single crochet into the same space and this is the second shell all right so here we are um after your very last shell this is what you should have and you're going to go into the very first single crochet of your round and place a slip stitch like that now you're going to make a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work and this is going to be the very first double crochet of your next shell so into the same space you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet to make a total of three double crochets which make up a shell and then go into the middle shell of the next the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet like that hold on 
um you're going to just stop here when you have two double crochets there like that and we shall work the third one when we come all the way around so just end here when you have two double crochets and then go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet and then go into the next single crochet which is here and place a shell we are back to a shell being uh, a total of three double crochets just like we were doing for the body of the upper part of the dress so after this you're going to go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet and then shell into the next single crochet and we are just going to repeat this all the way around until we come back to the beginning of our round and I'll show you how to wind up round two of red Okay, so I've made it all the way around and I've placed a single crochet in the middle stitch of the very last shell and then I'm going to prepare for a double crochet and go into that very last space where the first two double crochets come out of and I'm placing one double crochet because uh, we had placed only two that means this shell wasn't yet complete after this you're going to chain one and then go into the third chain of the first chain four with one slip stitch like that and now you can see the very first shell is now complete and then you're going to chain one turn your work and into that very space into that very stitch where we've placed the slip stitch you're going to place one single crochet and that's the beginning of this round so one single crochet and then uh, a shell into the next single crochet so I hope you still remember and you can memorize the pattern from here so after the shell you're going to go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one single crochet and then one shell into the next single crochet And you're going to repeat this all the way around until you come to the beginning of your round and I'll show you how to wind up round three of red. Alright, so I've made it around and I am placing my last shell into the last single crochet like that and after your last shell here you're going to go into the single crochet at the beginning of your round and place a slip stitch like that and now we are going to make a chain of four now this round is round four is going to basically be the same as round two of red so chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one and then you are going to go into the same exact space with one double crochet don't forget we don't finish up this shell at the beginning of the round we finish it up when we come all the way around just like we did for round two so if you don't remember you're going to rewind and then see exactly what we did for round two and you'll finish up your round four just like round two so 
one single crochet into the middle stitch of the next shell and then a shell into the next single crochet and that's the repeat for this round so we are going to continue to alternate between round two and round three round three is the one that starts with a single crochet so keep alternating between those two rounds until you get your desired length for your dress i'll be letting you know how many rounds that i did and the total length of my dress when i am through with the rounds that i need for mine for one year old and yeah just keep repeating those two rounds and i'll see you back when i am done with mine Okay guys, I feel like uh, this would have done a way better job as compared to Alize Cotton Gold because this looks a little bit pale and it's not as shiny as the Chinese yarn that I started with and I think this would be a very good match. So instead of using this, I am going to unravel my work and sit this on. And this, instead of the Alize Cotton Gold, I will be using the knuckle satin line to do the bottom part of the dress. I feel like this is going to give me a more detailed and uh, more beautiful look than what Alize is giving me. So yeah, those are some of the changes that I am making. Alright, so I went ahead to do a total of 25 rows of red and you can see the difference with the kind of red that I went for. This is the knuckle that I switched with the Alize Cotton Gold and it was a better match. And for this, I just made a chain of 120 and then went back on it with single crochet stitches. I'm sorry, I lost the footage there. But... Uh, just make a chain of 150 go back on it with a single crochet stitch all the way across and then put it through the very last um, row of pink so that it can demarcate the division between pink and red as you can see here just go in and out of those stitches and this is the back side of the dress by the way okay this is the back side where we have this little ribbon we bring back the ribbon at the front so this one you start weaving in this chain from the exact middle of the front and then go all the way around until you come back to the front and then from here you can just make a knot and make a tiny ribbon just like we did at the back So after tying that knot, you should be getting a ribbon at the front here. And I went for white because um, white is the middle color of pink and red. You know that when you mix red and pink, red and white, you get a uh, light pink. So that's uh, what I considered to choose my color for the string. And that's basically it. This is how my dress came out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and I will see you in my next video. Bye!